and thank you for joining the Anaplan Live Spotlight event. Today we'll be discussing the latest updates to the Anaplan APIs and how they can benefit you as a model builder. My name is Stacy Gibbons and I am a Senior Financial Systems Analyst for Simon Property Group. Uh, where I am a master Anna planner and I have been working with Anna plan since 2015. I generally focus my attention on security, data, structures, and integrations. Um, I earned my master Anna planner certification two years ago and really enjoy learning more of the in-depth model building concepts that I hadn't worked with before. With me today are Christoph and Chanevere, two subject master Anna plan two subject master experts at Anaplan here to discuss transactional API concepts. Christoph, why don't you tell yourself, tell us a little about yourself. Thank you, Stacey. Um, hi, my name is Christoph Kyoyon. I'm working at the Paris office. Um, I've been in Anaplan for more than five years now. I belong to the OEG team, Operational Excellence Group, which intends to build a bridge between and the fields. Uh, I am dedicated to data integration mostly, but also with uh, advanced modeling. Um, I help uh, a lot of uh, uh, EMEA customers to build their own models. I let my colleague uh, Chanavir to introduce himself now. Uh, thank you, Christoph. Um, uh, hi, folks. My name is Chanvir. I am principal product manager with Anaplan. I'm based out of our San Francisco office. Uh, I joined Anaplan in 2017, and I've been with them for close to four years. Uh, as part of my responsibilities here at Anaplan, I manage our roadmap for APIs, our public APIs for data integrations, which now also include the transactional APIs, which we will be talking about today. Um, I also uh, look after uh, our data integration with third-party platforms. Uh, these are cloud-based integration platforms where Anaplan has integration connectors and solutions available, um, as well as uh, the solution for electronic signature management. This is uh, DocuSign for Anaplan where in our partnership with DocuSign, uh, we have a solution where customers can use uh, their Anaplan data to roll out documents for electronic signatures and track them right within Anaplan. Happy to talk to all of you today. Great. Thank you, Chanavir. So all of us, uh, if we have any questions uh, from the, the group that's in attendance, please put them within the chat and we will get to them uh, as we can. Um, after the session is over, join us at our virtual table and we can continue the discussion then. With that, let's kick it off. So, um, as you guys may know, up to this point, there have been Anaplan Connect and REST APIs that work um, to execute actions within the models. Um, these are considered bulk APIs uh, as they move or act on data in bulk. Um, and they uh, run off of static predefined actions that are within the models. Uh, data ends up being imported or exported in a file format, which means that to automate any integrations, you end up needing an application server, some kind of um, scheduling tool, perhaps an ETL management, and this can potentially cause a problem within your integrations processes. Um, today we'll discuss the new transactional APIs that Anaplan has been working on. And transactional APIs are able to select or act on targeted data based on real-time selection. Christoph, how does that work? So that's, um, you, you did a very nice, very good summary of uh, all our integration options. Uh, indeed, uh, until very re recently, our integration was based, were based on the bulk API, meaning that we wanted, we intend to target uh, the bulk load, the bulk upload or bulk import in, in a large uh, volume. If you, if you look into our documentation, you will see that most of, um, most of our actions are done in an asynchronous way, meaning that you send an instruction to the Anaplan server and you will get an answer later on when it will finish. Let's have a look to, um, to a diagram that I built for this uh, event. Uh, I think you should have this in the screen right now. Um, 
And you can see that actually when a user wants to get data out of an appliance, what he has to do is to trigger an event that is received on the Anaplan API server. He will assign back to, um, he will assign you an event ID and you will have to query this event ID to know the, the state of the, of the task and finally get your data. Meaning that during the whole process, you don't have your data straight away. You need to send an instruction, wait for it to finish and download the data into your, into your repository. This way of working is, is, really, uh, is really powerful because it's really meant to address bulk loads and huge volume. But when you can do the most, you can do the least, but it's maybe not the best way to do it. That's why we, did it, we created this transactional API because in the opposite of that diagram or the previous diagram that we showed you is that instead of having all that uh, uh, processes, all those steps, once you get, you send your instruction, you will receive the, the outcome straight away. The response, the content is already in your response uh, body. So that's how, that's the main, main difference. One of the main difference between the bulk API and the transactional API. You get the content straight after you ask for them. Uh, and that is a, a, that is a main, uh, main change uh, compared to what has been done before. Another, another point is that if you are a model builder, you know that um, when you build a, a, an export, for example, it's based on a view, okay? You, 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 you play, you pivot your dimensions, you put um, your three or four dimensions on the, on the page headers, uh, some on the column or just one. The best practice would be one and one and few on the page headers. And then you, you, you save your view and this view will be used in the export. But one of the drawback is that when you want to make a change on that, um, on that export, you need to go back to your view change your view and resave your export with the same name, which is a bit cumbersome because uh, after a few, few months, uh, if you want to go back to what you've done earlier, you say, okay, what was the view I based my export on? And then you start to build, uh, to save your view with weird, weird names and you save your export with the other names that match with your export names, a bit complicated. So transaction API will help you uh, for some cases, to avoid that, because at the end, what you will need to maintain will be only views, okay? Because you will actually query a view directly from, uh, from the HTTPS request, from your request. You will say, okay, I want this view, the content of that view, of that view, and the model builder will just have to manage this view instead of managing a view plus an export which are whose links uh, disappear just after you save it. So and Christoph, one, one thing I, that I, is really nice is that. Sorry. <laughs> good. No, go ahead. Good. I was going to say, um, I think that all of us can probably ex uh, have a, a familiarity with the fact that the action ends up getting stale if you update your view. Um, as a model builder, you've created your view and you're happy with it and you create your export, but then your, your requirements change and you update your view, but you forget to update your action. And you're like, where's my data? Why is this not working? And, you know, then you curse and you remember what you're supposed to do. So this seems like it's a, a very different and uh, more flexible option that can, you know, prevent us having to remember things that might be hard to remember. It should help you in some further integration, maybe not the one that you've been building until today, but for the future integration, some, you, you will maybe, you will for sure uh, have less to maintain because you will be able to just maintain views instead of export and views, which are not related. Once you, when you, once you save your export again, you, lo you, you, you lose the link between export and views. So that will help you to maintain less. For mod so for a model builder, it will be much, much easier. 
And um, the, uh, the other part, which is really nice, is that if you save a view, you save it in a certain way, but you cannot actually easily query it, meaning that you can't uh, send a parameter saying, I want the view for France, or I want the view for US Great Lakes, or something like that. You, you can't you can query, or you have to do it in very cumbersome way, like meaning sending an import that will uh, change uh, uh, a Boolean, that this Boolean is the base of your export. But you can see that in API calls, you will have a lot of calls going forward uh, from and in Anaplan. And it's a bit uh, hard to fo follow up and to build this kind of integration. With, with a transactional API, you are now able to query your view, meaning that you can actually send some parameters saying, I want the, the content of that view for these members, these members only. So you do some kind of query directly on a view which is a big step forward because until now, and if you remember again, the diagram I showed you before, you don't, you, you don't have this result until you get your, your file downloaded. Here you will get your data already uh, sliced by those parameters, which will be a huge step forward when you will want to query directly on a plan. Uh, one of, and what will, what will change is that until now, if you, remember, if you look at most of the implementation that we did uh, for data integration, what you do, you export everything into databases, and those databases are queried by data visualization tool, whatever. Most of the time is what we do. With transactional API, you will maybe, uh, we hope, you will excuse these steps and directly use Anaplan as a repository, meaning that you will have your data as fresh as possible directly from the Anaplan server and not with a middle, middle stage, a staging area, which would be a SQL database or whatever. And the advantage, uh, what Shanavir can tell you later, just, just now, is that doing that will be less blocking. And that will be a really huge, uh, uh, less blocking than what we have today. When you do an export, it blocks your model. When you do transaction API query, it will be much less blocking. Is that right, uh, Shanavir? Uh, thanks for the introduction, Chris. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, absolutely right. I agree with you. Uh, these new APIs do provide a lot of benefits compared to the current way of setting up integrations with Anaplan. Um, I have two slides, uh, which I'd like to quickly cover. Uh, if you go to slide number two, the second slide, um, here I have summarized the benefits of the new APIs, the new transactional APIs in four, four categories. Um, one, as you mentioned that uh, now users, integration solutions, users, customers, our customers will be able to uh, work with their Anaplan model data, read or write data uh, without needing to set up actions. In one way, this simplifies integrations. Uh, with the current way of setting up integrations, there are a sequence of steps that a solution has to go through uh, to either read data or write data from Anaplan for various use cases. And this takes time. With the new APIs, they are uh, designed to be simpler uh, so effectively, the read and write can potentially happen in a single call to Anaplan. So we are cutting down a lot of steps. That is the file download, file chunking, file upload, triggering the action, the import export action, waiting for the status of the action. With these APIs, all of that can will be done in very few steps compared to what it is now. So the turnaround time for integrations will be faster. Second, these APIs are uh, designed to be granular. They will allow... Uh, uh, our uh, users and customers to work with small amounts of data, either for read or write. For example, if I'm reading data from a view, um, I'll be able to parameterize it at runtime. For, for example, um, if I have a module and a view where I have, say, products, the, the product or the SKU in the page dimension, and I have a set of parameters and metrics that I'm planning, forecasting for the product. When I do the read from that view, I will be able to parameterize that SKU or the product. So. Uh, I with a single uh, single view created with a product in the page dimension uh, at runtime in my integration solution I'll be able to tell that I want data for so and so product SQ and that will be read from Anaplan so more responsive and more granular integrations um, the current way of running integrations with Anaplan uh, our existing bulk APIs as we call them which are action based APIs these will continue to be there we will continue to support them for the foreseeable future. The new transaction APIs are something in addition to that and designed to give more capabilities. Um, 
a couple of points that i wanted to talk yes tracy um one of the things that um we didn't we didn't hit on was how we set up the view in anaplan to be able to respond to the queries so what we're accustomed to is creating a specific view to give us a specific data set like christos was saying but it's not really clear at this time how we set up the the module view in order to respond to the query so could you explain that a little okay <laughs> yeah a very good question so yes uh, the query that you will send to the transactional API, that you will use with the transactional apis would be uh, the parameters the, for that uh, api will be based on the page headers okay um, so what you have to send is as uh, a dimension dimension members on the page headers so what you have to keep in mind is when you build your view if you say this list is the one that i want to query on you will need to put it on the page uh, page um, uh, access so meaning that you will be able to send them when you will build your integration or when you will use the transaction api you will send the reference to that member uh, member of that list and then you will filter out the the data set that you will come from the module view so that's the the main i would say the main uh, keep to the main things to keep in mind when you want to query a view you have to build it in a way that the page uh, the page is uh, filled with a list that you want to query on understood so that's very much like you would uh, in a in a dashboard so you you have your page selectors so that you can filter your data down and this is a similar concept but for a direct query into the module great yeah uh, i also wanted to add to that that uh, reading data from a uh, module or reading cells from mod module is one capability of the transactional apis uh, we do have many other apis on the roadmap as part of the transactional api roadmap uh, the slide that i was just uh, showing now if you go to slide number 1 the first one uh, we see the four broad categories of apis that we have already launched or are planning to launch in the uh, uh, in 2021 and beyond um, the api that we spoke about the capability to be able to read data from a view by using parameters on the page dimension or page axis that's one api it's already uh, it's already out we will also have similar apis read apis for list where without needing to create export action users will be able to read data from a list at uh, by, by specifying the list at run time for example if uh, if in the integration solution i have requirement to uh, query many lists read data from many lists then while i'm working with that integration solution or while it's actually executing we'll be able to tell which list we want to read data from and that will be read without needing to create the export action we will have similar apis for write back as well apis Uh, transactional APIs to update cells in a module. Once again, working potentially in a single API call, so much faster turnaround time compared to what it is now with files chunk upload and triggering the import action. Same thing for lists as well. Uh, we will have transactional APIs to uh, to add new items to a list, to update items, and to delete uh, once again without requiring export action. Uh, so effectively, we are trying to make integration simpler and more responsive. Uh, and take an upland closer to being a platform which is a very powerful concept for example um, for one of the use case uh, which we heard from many customers uh, customers would like to build uh, uh, some solution on top of an upland they would like to extend an upland capabilities by adding some custom features these apis will enable them to do that uh, the customer it team or the partners will be able to uh, develop solutions that interact with their underlying anaplan model via these apis and are able to read the required data or to update the the required data dynamically at run time this now made possible with the transaction apis and uh, indeed and uh, uh, stacy i think that there's a, a a relevant question here in the uh the, the chat um we have a question from varshini that says is this only for an export action or does this also apply to module to module data movement or model to model that's an interesting question. Mm, it's it's not yeah you know it's not the same um uh for the model to model action you will rely on the same on the same uh, way you were doing it until today 
uh, it's not the same kind of APIs because it's a, it's a action uh, features uh, export. Meaning that when you want to uh, import from one model to another, you build your you import action based on a view in the same way. So transaction API is not linked to any model to model objects uh, imports. That does that doesn't uh, it doesn't address those needs. It's more it's more about Anna plan being used as a platform for other system. Okay, and uh, actually, uh, what could be really nice uh, to to show the um, to show how we can apply that and uh, uh, compare to what we couldn't do before. I prepared a little demo. You will see that uh, uh, we can put it on the, on the screen right now. It's a demo that is uh, using the new transaction API with a dialog flow bot. And this is a good spot for another question. Um, Lucia asks, when will we see the link between the view and the export? Without actions, how would we kick off the export? So she's wondering how you interact uh, to get the export using the, uh, the new API. Ah. Okay, so that's something that we have to we have to make sure that everybody understands. Um, with the first version of our export, you send to an Anna, to the Anaplan API the instruction to get the data. Okay, so you send an instruction that will run an export, and you get it. Okay, you download it from the Anaplan server. With the new API, is different. You say, I want this data. And straight away, without an export, without an export, you get the data directly in the response. So there is no export. You don't trigger an export on the Anaplan model. You get your data directly from the model. So there's no link to the model. Uh, there's no link to an export anymore. You don't need to save an export, to save an export action on the model anymore when you use transaction API. But obviously, that is not for model to model actions. It's really for Anaplan and third parties. Okay. Oh, oh uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So let's let's go back to the to the demo. I wanted to to show to show here. It's a demo. Uh, are you going to show, show it now? Okay. Perfect. So if you look at the demo right now, uh, it's. It's the use of transactional API with Dialogflow API, meaning that Dialogflow is a is a is a tool in a Google platform uh, that allows you to create bot, you know, like a chatbot. And uh, I wanted to to prove the use of the transactional API with this uh, kind of uh, tool, because until now I've been trying to do that a few years ago, but with the bulk API, I. I couldn't address one of the most uh, limitation of the um, of the um, of our API until now because Dialogflow has a five second timeout, meaning that when you want to get data out of an plan, you need to uh, and use Dialogflow, you need to have your answer straight five seconds before uh, after you ask for it, and with Bulk API is not possible. Now, as you can see in this video you have an instant connection to your data. Obviously, it's only one cell that you query, but if you can map parameters with what we call intent for a chatbot, meaning the parameters of your, of your conversation between you and the chatbot, if you build that, you are able to actually query, build a query out of that discussion, send it to the module, send it to the Anaplan transactional API server, and it will send you back directly the, uh, the answer. And as you can see, there is no export action because if it was, it would have been way too long and my dialogue flow uh, conversation would be, uh, would be, will fail in, in errors because I need to have an answer five seconds after I send my instruction. So in that demo, we proved that for and uh, middle, uh, low to middle size of conversation, Transaction API are way more seamless. You can actually have a better interaction, have the latest status state of your data thanks to that API. At this point, uh, I'd like to take a minute and uh, also talk about some of the other exciting capabilities apart from 
data, we will also have transactional APIs for model metadata. And going forward, uh, our intent is to have real-time integration capabilities in Anaplan. Uh, to switch back to my slides, if you look at slide one, where there are four boxes in which I have categorized uh, the kind of APIs that we are looking to roll out. Uh, we spoke about the data APIs right now, really exciting, a lot of new capabilities possible. Uh, the capability to use Anaplan as a platform, build solutions on top of Anaplan and have them dynamically interact with Anaplan based on users' interaction with that external solution and remove the dependency in act on actions. Apart from this, we also have a few other exciting things lined up on the transactional API roadmap. First one is the model metadata. Uh, we have rolled out a few APIs and we will be rolling out more APIs that will enable uh, users and our customers to get deeper insights into that Anaplan model. By that, what I mean is we will be able to answer questions such as what are the models accessible to me? What are the workspaces accessible to me in my Anaplan ecosystem? Uh, how much space is allocated to workspace versus how much space is consumed at that point in time? Uh, how many modules are there in my Anaplan model? How many views are there? What are the dimensionality of a view? Uh, then further on, uh, I'll be able to query things like how many lists are there in my Anaplan model? Fetch the, that, that list of lists to, to say. Uh, then detail properties and metrics of list. For example, is it a generic list? Is it a numbered list? If it's a numbered list, then what's the current index ID? And that helps me to automatically report on my model and my workspace parameters on a dashboard outside Anaplan and monitor the Anaplan models and prepare to take action in advance. For example, the same uh, use case. If it's a numbered list, then automatically we can report on the index number and be prepared to take action when the index number is approaching the 1 billion mark where it has to be reset. That reporting can be automated. We can use these APIs for model maintenance, for example, keeping track of what are all the views across all the modules in uh, all the workspaces, report on them automatically and see if any of them are old and obsolete and have to be deleted. This can now be automated. Um, last but not the least, uh, we are looking at rolling out real-time integration capabilities with Anaplan. This is still in the future and being discussed, um, but our intent is that uh, that we should provide uh, uh, the API that allow real-time integrations in one manner or the other. There are a couple of options. Once these APIs are available, uh, users will be able to build real-time integrations and stream data out of the Anaplan model. Uh, we'll also be incorporating these APIs in our existing integration solutions and partner solutions, um, and a lot of exciting possibilities going forward with this. Thanks, Chenevier. Uh, that part about the using the transactional APIs to monitor a workspace or the numbered list would be very important for the folks that are responsible for maintaining the Anaplan environment for their organization. I know that me personally, I towards the end of any um, year, I start looking at headroom in a model in a in a workspace because if our models end up with less than about five percent in of unused space in a workspace, our performance goes to hell. And so um, those are things that are very important to the folks that maintain the infrastructure for the end users. So that's fantastic. Um, I think we have a few more questions if uh, that's okay. Uh, one person, let's see, we said, yeah, go, go ahead. we have uh, Mitba saying, can transactional APIs extract the data out of all of the dimension items in one call automatically, or do you have to parameterize every list item? So I would say if you want to have the whole list extracted, you would put this list in the row axis, okay? And only put what you want to query on the page headers. If you don't, if you have no page headers, you will put everything on the row axis, and then you will have the view uh, uh, extracted. You don't. If you have no page headers, there will be no uh, no query query possible, obviously, because that is the only axis you can query on. Okay. So if you want to extract everything for one um, for one list, uh, a full list, uh, then you will just put it into the row axis. Got it. So another question from Ram says, is it safe to say that in the current state, unless there is a layer that sits on top of the AnaPlan 
or a downstream or upstream system, there would be no differences between the current APIs and the transactional APIs. I guess uh, Ron is asking um, if there's requirement for other technology to make use of the transactional API to, to manage the, the query, essentially. I think the answer is yes. Yeah, here, um, um, uh, on one hand, uh, the integration solution that we have with Anaplan, which are either Anaplan owned, uh, for example, Anaplan Connect, our connector with uh, iPaaS platforms, or solutions that are, are that are owned by partners, these will be enhanced to support the transaction APIs. So users will be able to continue using integration options, the current integration platforms options with Anaplan connectors, once they are updated, or, or obviously, uh, they'll be able to use these transaction APIs. Uh, they can also use this APIs directly to build custom solutions uh, with Anaplan. And please note that uh, these APIs, uh, they make integration simpler, uh, faster, more granular. At the same time, they also provide many new capabilities that don't exist with the current APIs. For example, current APIs, we can trigger actions, but we cannot parameterize. These will enable that parameterization. Uh, we have model metadata APIs that currently don't exist at all. So in a way, these are net new capabilities and uh, we are sure that our customers will benefit from these capabilities uh, once the standard existing integration solutions are updated, uh, as well as if they choose to build their own solution with this on top of Anaplan and leverage Anaplan as a platform. Um, I would I would add as well that um, we have to, uh, people have to be sure that the bulk API will will not go away. Okay, there are still huge use cases for um, big loads of data coming from SAP, from for your ERP, uh, you, will, you will schedule uh, big uploads, big uh, exports from Anaplan, uh, and those will, will be more suited for the bulk API. So you will keep that. Um, you will keep that kind of integration. Uh, that's what we recommend. If you want more, uh, I would say, small, more frequent to middle size, uh, frequent export, or we'll talk about import later, export, then we will recommend you to go to the transactional API, okay? You now have more choices. We we'll take advantage of those, uh, of those new APIs very soon as well. But then you will be able to decide to have to, which solution would be the, more, the best for your needs. Until now, we had only one uh, API, it was a bulk API. Like I said earlier, we, when you can do the most, you can do the least. When you don't do the best, you may not do the best in the best way. Thanks to that, you can decide which one you want to use for your integration needs. You can use bulk load for millions of records to import. You can use transaction API for high frequency uh, communication between another plan and third parties. And actually, there's one thing. Um, we talk about export a lot, but we have imports, right? That was one of the questions. Um, Mizbah says, also, is it only export that, or, that is available? Why are we not talking about imports and writing back into Anaplan? Yeah, I'll take that question. So Absolutely. What, yeah. Uh, yeah, 10 seconds. <laughs> Uh, very great question. We do have write back APIs uh, on a roadmap. In fact, uh, uh, they have been developed and uh, they are currently in early access or going to be rolled out into early access and then they'll be taken generally, uh, they'll be made generally available to all our customers. Uh, we have transaction write APIs for updating cells without using uh, import action, as well as um, transaction APIs to update list items, to add on update list items without using actions. Chris, back to you. And I wanted to add one, I think we want I want to add one thing. You can already update thanks to the thanks to those transaction API, the current period. So you can already write on the current period thanks to those transaction API, which actually is the only way to update your current period until now. We have another right. question from uh, Philip. Asking, will ALM work through the API too? For instance, Azure pipelines can be used to trigger 
the actual deployment and sync with government with governance attached to it. This may be uh, updating. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, they are a different set of APIs. The ELM APIs is a different roadmap at Anaplan. Transactional APIs uh, specifically uh, they deal with moving data uh, in and out of uh, the user's model as well as the model metadata and model properties. Um, we do have something on roadmap for the ELM. Uh, however, uh, I wouldn't like to touch on it. It's a, a different product manager and a team. Uh, we encourage your customers to reach out to the business partner and wire them to a product team for more information. Got it. Um, Riaz asks, currently we are running the imports or exports by API through the import ID or export ID. If no export is created, then what would be the input to get the call to get the data out of Anaplan? Mm. Yeah, so that, I take it this one. So um, when you when you use so when you use it, Bell API, the API that was on until now, you were sending instruction and you were downloading a file once this instruction was uh, was uh, performed. So you will, you will have to download chunks of an export. With this new API, the response is directly in the body of your query, meaning that you send your query and response, you get your data in, inside it. If you look at what is a, an HTTPS response, you will have, uh, in a, it's, it's on the web, you can see that you have a headers and you have content, a body of your response. And actually, your, the content of your module, your view, is inside this, uh, this body. So it's directly in your response once you, get, you, once you send your query. So it's really different. When you use your bulk API and you trigger an export, you ask for a download of a file. It's not synchronous. It's not instant. With this new transactional API, you query directly and you get your data directly in the body. It's really different, meaning that you can directly use it and, it, and on top of that, you can have it in CSV or the way that it is displayed in the view, or you have the JSON format as well, which has been something that people have been asking for. I don't know how, how far it will be implemented, but at least now we can provide you with the support of JSON for export and soon import as well. So thanks to that, your data is no more the result of a download of a file, is now the direct response of an Anaplan server in a JSON or CSV format. Great, thank you. Um, we have another question from Jared. He asks, does this work for the version one and version two API? I think this might be a new different API. Is that correct? Uh, uh, the new transactional APIs uh, have the same signature as the version two, the V2 APIs. Um, so for example, someone invoking or creating uh, applications using the transactional APIs, they'll follow the same uh, same API signature, uh, which would be api.anaplan.com slash two slash zero. Uh, so they will be incorporated within the same same API signature as part of version two APIs. Great. No change to the version one APIs, they are as is, no addition over there. It's more like a extension of the V2, right? Yeah, Great. that's correct. So the answer to that is it's an extension of the version two and not a completely different technology. Great. Um, we have a question from uh, Dheeraj uh, who asked, isn't there a restriction or limit on the number of cells that we can extract using this API to access data from the use directly? So Christoph was mentioning earlier that if you have a very large data set, you wanna stick with the bulk APIs that we had before, but that's an interesting question on just the the technical limit that you'd want to use for this API. Yeah, that's a fantastic. Uh, that's a fantastic question. Uh, the first version of the read API supports one million cell uh, cells 
from when reading from module view. Uh, we are currently working on a large scale read API, and our intent is to expand this to support much larger volumes than one million cells as it is today. Uh, hopefully that API will be launched with, by mid of this year and users will be able to use that for bulk exports as well. Uh, but as of today, uh, if users have bulk uh, export requirement, then action export action will satisfy that requirement and up to 1 million cell export in a single API called transaction read API is already available. That's great. Well, that's all that we have time for today. Um, Thank you very much for joining us in this discussion for the Anaplan APIs. Please visit us at our virtual tables um, within the Anaplan Group's uh, platform. There should be a, a, a link that's called networking, and we will each be in our own little room to answer any questions that you have. I think it'll take a minute or two for those to become active, but um, please go there and uh, we'll see you there. Thanks very much. Have a great day.